So, all right, so oh, let me get a drink of water. I'm already thirsty. Okay, so again, what we're talking about today, dot products, cross products, which are two different ways to multiply vectors. We talked about addition last time. We also need to know how to multiply them. Why? Because things in physics relate to that. Torque, energy, blah, blah, blah. So it turns out the math that we do today is gonna seem pretty math, straight math and not a lot of physics, but it will relate to tons of physics later. So again, we're trying to learn the physics now, so, or sorry, learn the math now so that it's easier to layer on the physics later. All right. So I'm going to screen share here and get the workbook going. Oh, there it is. Okay. And so probably right about here. There we are. Okay, so dot products and cross products. You can see we've got a lot of stuff here. I got this button that's annoying me. I'm gonna get it buttoned here. All right, and so uh, you're gonna see uh, two different things here. There's a dot product and a cross product. What is the difference when you write them? Well, this A dot B, you use a dot and that's one kind of multiplication. And there's gonna be a different kind of multiplication when you use the, the time symbol or the cross, right? So uh, this one up top is called A dot B. That's just how you say it, A dot B. You don't say A times B, you say A dot B. Why? Because there's two ways to multiply now. This one down here, this lower one is called A cross B. If you're in England, hello, hello, I'm from England now. I had a differential equations teacher. They used a wedge product. They said A wedge B, but we're not in England, so never mind. Okay, but yeah, all right. That's uh, Jim Glazebrook. Uh, hey, if you're out there, Jim, which I'm sure you're not, uh, cool. All right, uh, here we go. So what are we doing here? What does A dot B mean? What this means is here's the A vector. Here's the B vector. And what you're doing is you're trying to see how much of them are on top of each other in some weird way. We're trying to see how much these two vectors overlap. So in another way of saying it, the dot product is a measure of how parallel or collinear two vectors are. Okay, so uh, in this case, think about it. If they have the same amount of X and no Y component and no Z component, the dot product would be huge, right? Whereas um, imagine, oh, come on now. Imagine if BY was zero and BZ was zero, but a y was zero and a x was zero. Well, in this case, what would happen? X would drop out, y would drop out. For this one, uh, let's see, for the blue one, it looks like y would drop out and z would drop out. And as a result, notice if one of the vectors is only in the i hat and one of the vectors is only in the k hat or the z direction, which we haven't talked much about, the answer would be zero. And so we see, think about that. That is two vectors that are perpendicular. One's pointing X and one's pointing Z out of the page. So normally we think X, Y, and Z is out of the page. Let me get three markers here. So you could say X is the red. And I know some people are colorblind. Let's try and get red green out. Uh, so we've got black and how about purple? So you could, uh, whatever color that is, I don't know. But so the idea here is you could imagine this is X the black is Y and the blue would be Z direction. And so imagine if you had something that's pointing in the X direction and something in the Z direction, they're perpendicular. They're not parallel at all. In that case, we get zero dot product. Whereas if you have two vectors that are both almost exactly on the X axis, it's weird that marker looks blue on the screen there, but yeah, it is purple here. So in this case, if these two vectors are almost pointing the same way, the dot product would be very big. If they're pointed at right angles, it's very small. If they're pointed opposite directions, what are you gonna get? And you could unmute if you want, I'll wait for once. Zero? Oh, let's think about it. One. That's, that's a good guess, nope. Let's, let's put in some numbers. Let's say this was three, because it's to the right, and this was negative four. What would you get over here? And I appreciate somebody that was brave there. I, I do appreciate it. If AX was three and I plug in three, 
and BX is negative four, what do you get? Well, negative 12. Yeah, exactly. And so my point is this, and sorry, I know Zoom sucks and, and you know, I appreciate you for speaking up. Thank you. Um, the idea is if two vectors point the same way or close to the same way, you get a positive number. If they're perpendicular, you get zero. If they're opposite directions or close to opposite, you get negative numbers. And so uh, it's a little bit weird. Uh, and let's, all right. So, um, and I'll do some examples on the whiteboard in a minute. This is another way of writing the dot product. Notice we have two different ways to do it. This version up here is great if you have vectors in Cartesian form, right? Because X, Y, Z form, that's Cartesian form. This one right here is great if you have it in the other form where you know the magnitudes and the directions, you could actually do this in polar form. So we see that there's different ways to do the dot product. It's one type of multiplication that can be done in different ways. The same thing's gonna happen in cross products. So notice when we're doing multiplication of just numbers, there's one way to do it. We've got vectors, there's four ways to do it. Cartesian dot product, polar dot product, Cartesian cross product, and uh, what was the last one? Polar uh, cross product. All right, whatever. All right. This isn't going to make sense till we do examples, which we will get to in a minute. Um, this is something I've kind of glossed over up until now. We've been basically doing 2D vectors, right? What we'll see is in three dimensions, you could do, instead of doing x squared plus y squared to get the magnitude, you do x squared plus y squared plus z squared to get the magnitude. All right. Now, this line right here, it seems very innocuous. Um, it's, it's pretty important to know this. We're gonna be doing physics and physics class is just a little bit different than a math class. And so this is something I want you to have memorized really well. So it's, it's pretty straightforward, but the idea here is this. If you have one unit to the right dotted with one unit to the right, well, think about this equation right here. If I put in one times one, times cosine of what's the angle between any vector and itself? What's the angle between to the right and to the right? Zero. So cosine of zero, that's zero degrees. Cosine of zero is one and all this ends up equaling one. So again, these are hat vectors. These are special vectors. Notice these are these are vectors with an arrow or a harpoon on top. These ones are hat vectors. They're special vectors that have length one. More on that in a minute, as you can see right here, how to turn vectors into hat vectors. All right. Um, now notice if two vectors are perpendicular, we already said that they're zero. Well, I hat and J hat, we know they're perpendicular. There's a right angle there. So those two things are zero. And notice the order doesn't seem to matter. Again, remember this. I hat dot I hat is one, J hat dot J hat is one, versus if you try to mix them up when you're doing the dot product, you get zero. And obviously the same thing, same kind of thing would be true if you threw in K hat. I hat dot K hat would be zero, whereas K hat dot K hat would be one. All right, um, we've kind of summed this up. Dot product of two perpendicular is zero. Clearly that's important if I'm bothering to say it multiple times. The order of the vectors doesn't matter. It does matter for cross products. And then uh, the result of a dot product is a scalar. Now I know we've been talking a lot. Remember, uh, if I said I drive 50 miles per hour, or let's do 50 meters per second, due east, that is a vector. Okay. If I just say I drive 50 meters per second, oh my gosh, by the way, that's pretty fast. <laughs> Remember that times it by about 2.2. So if I'm driving 110 miles per hour due east, I'm going to get to Bakersfield quickly. Uh, uh, if I'm driving at 50 meters per second, um, that doesn't tell you a direction. This, because it has a direction, is called a vector, right? Vector has a size and a direction. This down here, it's just the size or my speed. That is a scalar. And so this is very special. Sometimes dot products are called the scalar product. Why? Because the output of a dot product is a scalar. Now look in here. 
Notice carefully, this has I hats, J hats, and K hats. The input is a vector. The other input has I hats, J hats, and K hats. It's also a vector. But notice what is not written over here. There's no I hats, J hats, or K hats. This is going to be a scalar. And this is called the scalar product. So we've seen it called the dot product, the wedge product. Oh, wait, that's, yeah, never mind. I don't want to go into that. All right, so dot product or scalar product. All right. Remember, inputs are two vectors. Output is a scalar. All right, so let's do some examples with this math, and then we'll go on to talk about unit vectors, okay? So let me go to the whiteboard. And remember, at any time, you can ask Jay questions. There she is. Uh, feel free to uh, ask her any questions you want or chat amongst yourselves. If, and if you want to, if this is all straightforward to you and you're like, you know what, I think I know this, you could go ahead and start looking at um, the example on page 61 if you think this is too boring. But I'm going to do a different example on the board, similar to that. And you could also look at page 62. And there, whoops, sorry, I've got uh, Alan's up there. Sorry about that. Uh, you could also start doing this problem in the workbook, 3.9. And if your version of 3.9 doesn't go all the way up to part, part K, then maybe you should get the version off the Canvas webpage or whatever I did, or, or somewhere I gave you the first three chapters. So this is one of the significant problems that I updated in recent years. So make sure you get the updated version of 3.9. If you want, just snap a screenshot right now. Okay. All right. Let's get to work. All right, let's try out these big markers. Let's chair out of here. All right, so apologies if this is bad, you can let me know. Hopefully it's working a little better than the other day. All right, so we've got this XY coordinate system here. Let's just take two vectors. Um, I'm gonna avoid green for a minute. Let's say A is right here. And let's say this is, uh, that looks like about, oh, let's just say 40 degrees. It's not to scale. And I'm gonna be lazy with the sig figs because we know that on the whiteboard, I run out of space. So in the workbook, I do examples with sig figs. Let's focus on learning the vector stuff instead of sig figs right now, okay? So let's say this has length seven, just to keep it interesting. And then let's give it some units. Let's say this is a velocity. Let's say meters per second, okay? Now, um, so this might be, say, the velocity that one person is running or something, right? And let's say there's another vector over here. Let's say this is person B. And this looks more like uh, 25 degrees. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. And let's say they're running this way at six meters per second. Okay, and again, we're being lazy with sig figs. Sorry about that. Well, if I want to deal with this, I want to, let's say I want to do the dot product. Maybe this relates to something uh, that we, don't, we care about in physics, but for right now, let's not focus on that. For, for some reason, we need to know the dot product of these, okay? So let's say we want to know A dot, oh, this, let's go capless here. Let's live on the edge. Cap free living. Okay. Let's go A dot B equals. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. I'm going to screen share and just make look at the equation. Ah, screw that. Let's just go to the book. I'll hold it up here. Oh, man. This is the danger of cap free living, right? Just write all over myself and my clothes. Uh, right here. So I'm looking at this and I see it looks like that second line, which I think I called 3.2, might be the easiest way to do this problem. So because we're trying to learn, I'm going to do this both ways so that we could see how to do this problem using Cartesian coordinates. And we're also going to do it using polar coordinates. But because the polar form looks easier, I'm going to deal with that that way. So again, I look at this and I say, wait a minute, I know everything in polar form. Shouldn't it be easy to do it this way? Magnitude of A, this is not a vector, right? This is a vector, it's got the vector line on it. 
So this is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times uh, cosine of, now think to yourself, should I use 25 or 40 degrees here? Let's look at the book. Neither one. Hopefully that was your answer. I was trying to trick you. Oh, that's sneaky Jarstead. He's the worst. So notice I need the angle between the two vectors. So that's not too bad to figure out, I think. Now, let me think here. If this is 25 and this is 40, I know that this whole angle up here, right here, theta AB, and I'll check if I'm on the screen in a second. Okay, I am. That should equal 180 degrees minus those two, which are what, 65? And take a second to make sure you believe that. So again, the idea here is this is the angle that's between them, theta AB. That is the angle I need to shove in here, not 25, not 40. And so, making that a little neater. Again, ignoring sig figs. So what's that gonna be? 120 minus five, so that's what, 115? Make sure I don't screw this up in my head, all right? So hopefully that's 115. If I screwed it up, you could tell me. All right, so now uh, in this case, A, that number right there, I think we know it, it's seven, correct? Let me rephrase, it's not seven. We're in a physics class. What am I trying to trick you with? You need to add the units. Yes, so when we're doing physics, you can't just write the numbers all the time, all right? Nice job, thank you. I don't know who that was, but that, I appreciate it. Same thing here. All right, um, hey, this is good, good to know. Like if you're ever worried about sp sounding stupid, asking a question, trust me, for one, I could care less about that. All I, all I care is that you ask questions. Number two, I have no idea who's talking anyways because I can't see anything. So yeah, feel free to ask questions and don't worry about you know sounding stupid. I think it's very hard for students to get over that, but oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I would rather have you ask the questions. Usually if you're thinking it, most of the class is thinking it too. So there's rarely uh, anything that I would ever even think about considering a stupid question, all right? Um, so ask. Plus, you never know. What if your computer lagged and you know you didn't hear something I said? There's lots of reasons you should be asking questions. All right, I'm just going to punch this in and shut up. So 42 cosine 115. Think to yourself, should it be positive or negative? Double check. Are you in degrees? All right, let's hit it. Whoa. Negative. Does that make sense to you? We'll discuss it in a minute. So I'm just going to say that's about negative 17.75. I don't know. That's not right. And of course, you know why. So somebody other than the person that just spoke up, what are the units? Meters a second. Nope. Uh, meter square square. Square. Oh. Yeah, because there's meters times meters over seconds times se Isn't that weird? So watch out. Good job. And so the reason I'm asking these things is because I've made these same mistakes myself hundreds of times in my career. So I'm not asking them because I want to make you make mistakes. I'm asking them because I want you to get it right on quizzes. All right. Uh, and test and obviously in your job, too. All right. So uh, and again, we're ignoring sig figs here. So whatever. That's one way to calculate the dot product. Now, let's think about it. What are things we should check? Make sure you remember the correct units because this was there and they get squared, the units get squared. Okay, cool. Minus sign, think, does the minus sign make sense? Yeah, kind of. In this sense, they look like they're more opposite each other than alike, right? They're kind of, so if I just look at these two markers, they're kind of pointing opposite ways. So they should be a negative number. If it was close to perpendicular, we'd expect a number close to zero. And if it was close to parallel, we'd expect something positive. So zero, large positive, large negative dot products. All right, what do you think? So far, so good? I'm gonna check here with the gallery view. 
What do you think? Doing all right? All right. Cool. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's take a look. Um, I appreciate the feedback. That does definitely help me because I have no clue what's going on in your brains. Let's try and do it the other way. Just to remind you what the other way was, and we're going to have to do a little work now. Now I want to do it this way. I want to do it Cartesian. You could guess what's the first step. I have to write the vectors in Cartesian form. Otherwise, I can't do this, right? So if you want to beat me to it, I bet you're faster. Switch those vectors into Cartesian form. I'm going to do it as well, and we'll compare. All right, so um, let me do this. All right. So we're going to try and do A dot B the other way. But the first thing you got to do is get these into Cartesian form. So let's do that. Uh, A was first, I guess. OK, so looking at this one, you could beat me to it. You don't have to watch me at all. Try and do it without watching me. And if you need to, you can look up. This should be. Opposite, adjacent, leaving off the units on the intermediate step. I know you're probably saying, dude, you just told us to write the units. You're right. But sometimes what I do is I just write them on the final step. And that's okay if you get in that habit. At the beginning of your careers, I would not do that. This one looks, uh, oh, it's also adjacent. So this is six cos 25. All right. Um, and now I need to write this out. I got to get a calculator out. Seven cos 40 and seven sine 40. Just have them both on my screen at the same time. Looks like it, these are both positive. Positive. What was, which one? Uh, oh, this one. Okay, so... Um, both positive. I better put the units on now so I don't forget later. Okay. All right. So I think that's right. Let me do B now. Six cos 25, six sine 25. I don't want to forget those units. I'll stick it on right now. I know I'm going to get a J hat term here, an I hat term here. I hat is, uh oh, I hat's negative, right? It's to the left. So this number is, huh? That's kind of cool. They almost exactly cancel out left, right. That's fun. And I'm, oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. It's negative. Yeah. Okay. And so, oh, geez, I forgot the speaker view. My bad. All right. Well, there we go. That was, I was, I did that on purpose. So you couldn't see that. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, let me just check in with you. Hopefully you're doing this, all right? If you have a question about this, the most common question would probably be, wait, where'd you get the minus sign from? Remember that this one was pointed to the left. Everything else was positive except for this one. And that's why this was six cosine and it was negative. The other thing, you guys are still pretty new. You might forget, how did I figure this out? Well, I just know from experience, it's always gonna be six times either sine or cosine. And then I look at this side and I say, this is adjacent to 25. Cosine reminds me of so ka toa adjacent. So the cosine 25 goes adjacent to the 25. So again, the vectors are always, the components are always going to be either six sine theta or six cosine theta. And then I just look which one's adjacent, that gets the cosine, which one's opposite, that gets the sine. So that's how I do that in my brain. All right. Now, if we were adding these vectors, we'd stack them on, do the eyes, but we're not adding vectors anymore. Now we're doing A dot B. All right. And so. Um, we don't need that angle anymore, so I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. 
And just so you could see this label, remember this is vector A over here. And this is kind of sloppy, so I'm gonna get that out of there. Let me make sure that's still visible. Okay, so this is vector A over here, the purple one that looks blue. All right, kind of looks black too. All right, anyway, so now I wanna do A dot B. the other way. All right. And so what do I do? I'm going to take AX BX. And so that's going to be There's the AX and the B uh, sorry, a uh, I'll just write it up and I'll explain where this comes from in a minute. I ran out of room for the units, I think. Maybe I could squeeze it in here. We'll do the units in a minute, okay? I know I'm leaving off the units. That'll, that'll be where we squeeze in the units in a minute. Think, what is this? This is AX, BX. That X is kind of tiny. This is AY, times by. That y is kind of crappy. And then again, what am I doing? This. I'm trying to do the dot product this way and work this out. I got to go to my calculator and we already know the answer should be, what was it? Negative 17.75 ish. So let's see if we get the same result. 5.36 times negative 5.44. And then we're going to add to that 4.5 times 2.54. And I got negative 17.73. And some things we should always check. We know this is wrong um, because we haven't done the units yet. But if this has meters per second and this has meters per second, this is going to be meters squared per second squared. Furthermore, this has meters per second and this has meters per second. So that one's meters squared per second squared. So we know the units on this thing are still meters squared per second squared. That checks out. That means this is still meters squared per second squared. And now I want you to think. Why is this answer different than the other one in the last decimal place? Because we've been ignoring sig figs. And so now we see why sig figs might matter to an engineer. If you do it without rounding or you round it one way, like here I rounded in the third digit, right? If I'm always rounding in the third digit, I expect the third digit to be questionable or doubtful, right? And so here we actually got lucky and it was good to three digits. It should only be good to about two. That's a reflection of the fact that numbers that start with one tend to have one extra sig fig. Long story, let's ignore that. All right, um, let me see where we're at here. Crazy. I don't know, all right. Um, let's check in with you. Is that making any sense? I better put these caps on before I forget. Uh, or questions on that. Okay, some good stuff there. Okay, so there's like two different ways to, to find the dot product. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're absolutely right, Dom. There's two ways to do it. Which way looks easier to you? The first way, right? Exactly. Yeah. Which way do you think works all the time? The second way. Exactly. So in three dimensions, it's almost impossible to do the first way. Because okay. think about it, if you have two vectors in a plane, it's actually really easy to get the angle between them. But what if they're off axis and they're doing some weird stuff? Yeah. It's like, ah, uh, the angles, trying to get the angles in 3D is very difficult. And it turns out in order to get the angles in 3D, you have to use the dot product anyway. So it'd be a circular reference. You would never get the job done. So Dom is absolutely right. If you have the angles, if you have the magnitudes and the angles, 
geez, do not do it with the second method. But if you don't, please use the second method because the second method works every time, always. And you could get computer programs to do it for you as well. All right, so um, yeah, good. Uh, Dom, did I interrupt you or was that your whole thought? Um, no, that was, that was like my whole thought, yeah. So what you're saying is use the second method then. Um, what I would say is know both and use the easiest method to get the job done. So in general, in physics, we want to do as little math as possible. So you kind of want to know all the tricks so you can do as little work as possible. And let's go to a local expert we know, Jaden. Jaden, you actually have had multiple physics courses. Do you use both techniques or, or just one? You tell us. Um, I actually use both. So when I do have an angle, I will use the first method that he showed with the magnitudes just because it's so much easier than multiplying every little thing out. But that's not always the case. So I know both of them. Um, and I use both of them quite a bit, actually. Um, so definitely know both of them. But if you have an angle, use the first one. Right on. I, I think that sums it up. All right. Um, any other questions? That was good, Dom. Thanks. Boy, it's nice having Jay here to give actual student feedback from somebody that knows what it's like from the student perspective. So I appreciate that, Jay. Um, and Jay, I, you know, I don't care. You could always contradict me. You don't have to be nice. So, um, but I usually try to listen to my students and then tell you what my former students have told me. So um, yeah, Jay, if there's ever a time where you're like, you know what, you rarely need to speak up. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, great job. Uh, let me show you something else here. Now, uh, in this case, you might be saying this seems totally useless. One of the things that's really cool about the dot product is you can actually turn any vector into a unit vector. Now, when you're sitting out there as a student, you're probably thinking, who cares? What is a unit vector? A unit vector is useful in three dimensional space. So it's really easy when we're talking in two dimensional space, you could actually say like north of east or east of west. It's very difficult to describe directions in three dimensional space. The classic way to do this mathematically is to write a unit vector. All right. And if you want, I'll show you later at the end, if we have time, why this is really useful in a, in a physics code. And so you can see it turns out unit vectors are hugely useful uh, when you're trying to analyze complicated physics problems in three dimensions. That's the only way, right? You can't just say to the right or to the left. You have to say that away. The unit vector is the way you say that away. All right. Now, don't overthink this. It's a straight up procedure, but you do need to start looking super carefully. And I'm going to zoom in on this just because this is one of my pet peeves here. All right. So students got to learn this. And um, I want you to look smart here. Notice the difference between these things. Okay. This is a vector. It's got an arrow on it, right? Sometimes people will write it like this with that arrow. That's fine. Either way, it's still a vector. It's got an arrow. This has got some kind of chevron, okay? So it's a hat. There's a big difference. A vector is the whole thing from here all the way up to there. A hat is this little portion. It's one unit long. So let's say this big one is seven meters long, right? This is what's really crazy. The hat vector ends up being one with no units. Unit vectors have no units. And I'll show you why in a minute. It's basically saying one unit in that direction, but it doesn't specify what type of unit. It's a very special thing. Just like when we talk about angles, you don't talk about angles in meters per second or angles in uh, feet. We talk about angles as a direction. So uh, and in math, we'd say they have units of radians, which turns out to be unitless. So notice this unit vector has size one and no units. It's almost, it's crazy. So this is a big deal. You need to know, look for the difference. There's a hat and there's a vector. If you use them incorrectly on the final exam, I'll just get angry, want to rip up your paper, but instead just take off points, okay? So I've said enough on that. I want you to look good, and you have to use these terms correctly. 
Do not confuse a hat with an arrow. Enough said. All right, let's get this smaller here. Oh, that's going to be up there now. <laughs> Whoops. Let me get rid of that. All right. So um, it's really easy to make it, though. They're obviously related. How do you do this? The hat vector, straight up, take the real vector and divide by its magnitude. Let's not overthink this. Think this. Let's do an example, OK? So this is how you make it. If you want to read the instructions, they're right there. Let me get them smaller here. So I'm going to follow this procedure that's listed right here. Uh, so again, we're just doing this part right now, not that, not that next part. So we're trying to do the uh, turn any vector into unit vector. Let's do it on the board. Speaker view. Okay. And let's practice with a 3D vector. whatever come on chair oh, these kids my kids leave this stuff here and i can't all right there we go they're always moving stuff around on me it's all right okay let's just take a vector and let's start with cartesian form let's say it's three meters in the i hat minus four meters in the j hat uh how about uh minus five meters in the k hat Professor Jorstad. Oh, yep. Oh. Would you mind moving it down a little bit? Right on, that? thank you. Yes. Yep, right on. Sorry about that. And let's change that up. Sorry about that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, and so I think I can get just a little more here. There we go. All right, now I don't know if you can tell, but the magnitude of this is what? Does anybody know? All right. 3, 4 makes 5, 5, 12 makes 13. So this is a 3, 4, 5, uh, 3, 4, 5 triangle mixed with a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So the magnitude is 13. But let's say you didn't recognize that. Uh, and actually, the magnitude is not 13. The magnitude is 13 meters. All right, whatever. Trying to get you used to dealing with physics. A, the magnitude. I'm going to show you the two ways. Remember, you could either write that with the absolute values or this is called vector norm in a math class. Okay. It's the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, oops. And again, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, Let me get it right. The magnitude of a vector, you just take the x squared plus the y squared plus the z squared. So notice all the minus signs will drop out. Now, if you don't believe me, you can punch it in on your calculator and see 3 squared plus 4 squared plus what did I say, 12 squared? Oh, and wasn't this a negative? But the negative is going to drop out. And then square root it. 13, there we go, just confirming. And let's make this look right. That should have been a negative. So this is equal to 13 meters. I know it seems obnoxious that I'm doing that. I want you to get in this habit all the time. Someday, this annoying habit of me harassing you about the units might make you start to harass yourself about the units. And then that's a good thing because you make fewer mistakes. Um, there's a famous story. There was a, a, a mission sent to Mars, I think. It was a Mars rover. They spent millions and millions of dollars on it. And then uh, one of the parts was made in Colorado by Lockheed Martin. They used uh, inches and everybody else used centimeter, uh, centimeters and they didn't tell anybody. And so it crashed after it got to Mars or, or something. You can read about that. So by not checking the units, it was hundreds of millions of dollars of mistake. Anyway, so yeah, this, this stuff does matter on rare occasions. And you don't want to be the one that gets blamed for a $100 million failure and gets fired. Okay, so yeah, there's A. Now that was not the point, although that probably matters more. What I want to do is I want to get this vector A hat. By definition, all I do is I take A, the vector, and divide it by A, the magnitude. And I'm going to prove to you these units are going to drop out. You might see it already. Everything's got a meters. 
So the, the meters are going to cancel. So it's three meters I hat minus four meters J hat minus 12 meters K hat. Now think, just to clean this up, I could factor out the meters to the end. So this is the same vector. It's got meters in each term. I just factored them out. Now I got to divide this by 13 meters. Because there's meters in the top and bottom, cancels out. Unit vectors have no units. And then after that, it's just calculator time. You could beat me to it. What's really cool is after you learn this stuff, we're going to teach you how to do this in the code and you never have to do it again. So just get good at the basics and then later on you'll know how to check your work. 3 div 12, what is that? Just 0.25? Oh, it's 13. Whoops. So 0.23. Now, hey, a lot of you are going to be engineers. Some of you are lazy. Some of you don't like to write the zero. Some of you work in a shop class where you're not supposed to write the zero. Well, in an engineering class, you're supposed to write zero point, okay? So Dom Del Bello is gonna take off points when you're in his class. So if you're an engineer, make sure you get in the habit of writing zero point this now while you're starting, okay? Uh, I hat does not cancel, so that's still there. Uh, so then I'll just divide that by three, times it by four, so negative 0 0.3. Um, hopefully I did this right. 923. There we go. Uh, did everybody get the same numbers there? You can take a quick screenshot if you need it. You got the, I did remember to hit the live stream. So yeah. Okay. I just want to check in with you. Is that good on making the unit vectors? Did I go too fast there? Okay, good. All right. I appreciate the feedback people. Thanks. All right. Um, so now, yeah, and again, I'll try and show you at the end if there's time why you would care about this, but we've got a half hour. I want to try and cover as much as we can. I actually want to try and finish the chapter today so that the next time can be all questions and just practice, okay? So if we don't do that, that's fine. Like we said, we've got the time, but I think it'd be great to give you the long weekend. That way you could work if you need to and you know, not work if you don't have to. Okay. Um, next up. Now let's screen share and do this. All right, so now we've kind of done this part, how to turn a vector into a unit vector. The next part, it's pretty useful to know this. Now, I, you know, you might be saying, why would I ever need to know this? Just trust me, there's a time, especially like a civil engineer. This really strikes me as a civil engineering thing. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. But yeah, um, we want to get the angle between two known vectors. Notice I showed you two ways to do this. One way is great if you have the vectors in polar form. The other, vec the other way is nice uh, if you have them in Cartesian form. But notice either way, you kind of have to know the magnitudes and the components here. So you kind of need to know both. Over here, you could actually do it really easily if you know two directions, if you know two hat vectors. Um, more on that in a minute. Um, so there's the two different ways uh, you could write this. They're basically the same. A dot B, this is A dot B. Uh, let me do it with the annotator, sorry. Just want to point this out that this right here is the same thing as this right here. And now you don't have to memorize this derivation. If you just want to memorize this result right here, or this result right here, whichever one's easiest for you to memorize, that works great. Okay, so I'm showing you many different styles. At this point, they're all basically the same, but people think in different ways. So um, let's go ahead and do a quick example, all right? So that's what we're looking at.
Now, you might notice that Cartesian form is pretty important, right? So I'm going to skip straight to the Cartesian part. But remember, we've already practiced going from polar to Cartesian back and forth. So you're going to get really good at that. And you have to get really good at that for the vector quiz. All right. You just it's just part of life. So um, if you're going to do any kind of technical work that has vectors, you have to be great at going back and forth. OK, so let's just start with the Cartesian form to make our life easier. Let's say we have A uh, is equal to uh, and I'm going to get a little bit lazy with the units right now. So I'm going to take the units off and just do pure math because I've hit the units pretty hard already. Let's say this is three in the I hat minus four in the J hat. And let's say vector B is equal to um, negative. Uh, let's do another 512. Let's say it's negative five in the I hat plus 12 in the J hat. And I don't know what this dot product or what the angle will turn out to be. But what we could do is we could draw it and get a feeling for it really quick. So before I do any math, I'm going to quickly draw it and try and get a feeling for it, right? So this one, A, it goes three to the right, one, two, three, four down, one, two, three, four. I'm not being perfect here. I'm just kind of doing this approximately. This one goes, oh, and so that's vector A. Let me check if it's on the screen. Yeah, we're good. So this one's three over four, uh, four down. This one's five left and 12 up. Uh-oh. Okay. So again, this is vector B. Is this perfect? No. But does it give me an idea? Yes. Could I use Sokotoa to get this angle and this angle and subtract them? Yes. But is that slow? Yes. Does that work in 3D? No. So the idea is, yes, there are other ways to do what I'm going to ask you to do right now. But the way I'm going to show you works all the time, whether your vectors are 2D or 3D. So basically, learn what I'm saying, because you could use it all the time. Right? That's what we want. All right. So just eyeballing it. I'm going to guess, or I don't know, how about a student? What angle do you think that looks like? Just give me a number. It's okay if it's totally wrong. Just what's your guess? What does it look like to you? It'll make it more fun to do the problem. Wait, which angle? 170. Yeah, between these two. I heard 170. Do you guys think that? That sounds pretty good to me. Would it be negative 170? Um, oh, yeah, that's a... Um, we're just going to get the size of the angle. Let's not worry about the plus minus sign. So yeah, okay. that, that's good to think about. Um, but we're going, I guess we're going from A to B. If you were going from B to A, you would argue it's negative. Yeah, so that's, you could say it's either way, depending on which vector to which. But let's just guess. Let's say it's about 170-ish. So that makes me more interested in the answer. Now I've kind of, all right. So now let's see. We have an idea of what the answer should be. Let's follow the procedure. Whoops. Right there. Okay. We're going to do the X, B, the AX, BX over the AB, all that crap. So now you've got it written there. So I'm just going to do, it's going to be three times negative five. That's the AX, BX. And then I'm going to do negative four b y or sorry a y b y uh that's 12. so that's the top okay this is a x b x ah oh, geez a x and this is a y it's a little bit weird when you're yeah never mind ah this is by, right? And, ah, oh, geez, bx. Oh my gosh. Trying to be efficient with the markers just wasted my time. All right. And now I know from experience this is a three, four, five triangle. So this is a magnitude five. So that is the magnitude of A. If you don't believe me, you could punch it in. This is a five, 12, 13. So I know this one's got magnitude 13. Magnitudes are always going to be positive. 
okay? And then this is equal to cosine of theta AB. So all of this junk in here is equal to the cosine of the angle. It's not the angle, it's the cosine of it. So I'm gonna punch all this in and get a number and then I'll do cosine inverse of it. So I gotta to go to my calculator too. So negative 15 minus 48. Oh, it's not even on, geez. And then divide that by, what is this, 50, 65? Or just divide by five, then divide by 13, because it does operations. I got negative 0.9692. Oh, so let me be clear here. This was the magnitude of B. This was the magnitude of A. And so out of all that, I'm going to have to lower the screen here. Cosine theta AB equals negative 0 0.969. Again, get used to doing that. All right. And now I'm going to cosine inverse both sides. So I'm going to cosine inverse of the answer, second answer. And then you could put the closing paren. But what do we get? Hey, you guys are spot on. Good judge of angle there. It must be my excellent drawing to scale. <laughs> Whatever. One, let's just say 166. Hey, let's go to Nukuyama, everybody. All right, so theta AB, old Kuyama. No, well, we're too cool for that. All right, whatever. All right, so there it is. About one, and I'll, sometimes you see me do this, I'll write approximately. All right. There we go. Wow, it actually fits, that's cool. Uh, Let's get some feedback here. You guys doing all right with this? I'll keep it on. I'll keep, okay, cool. Let me get it back to there in case I saw people still writing there. Okay, so that's how you get the angle. Now, again, you might be saying, this seems stupid. Why would I ever do this? Well, here's, a, here's an example if I could. Um, so again, that particular one turned out to be 166. The picture was really great. Are there other ways to do that? Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking um, the road to New Kuyamas, right? Highway 166. But yeah, <laughs> that's my jokes are not good. Fortunately, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got you. So, all right. So, um, all right. So let me think. Uh, screen share. All right. Uh, yeah, I was going to try and say, you may be thinking, gosh, this class sucks. This is stupid. This is boring. This is worthless. Let me just skip ahead a minute. There's lots of great practice and worked examples in here. So if these examples I did too fast, you've got some more out there. Um, this is one that I kind of think about when I think about dot products. You could imagine you have some structure and you need to tie it to the ground. And this is the kind of problem where a civil engineer would actually use these things in three dimensional space, you got to figure out how much tension is in each wire and which way it's pointing and all kinds of stuff like that. So, um, uh, Dom, those formulas are in our workbook. They're, uh, so the pages I'm showing you are in your workbook, uh, whatever page I'm on. So all those formulas were on page 60, Dom, page 60 in the workbook. All okay. Right. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, but so, yeah. And like for now, I guess we should, you know, and so maybe in crystallography, if you want to do that, blah, 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 blah. So there's lots. And that's, let's say you need to learn about torque or energy. These are actual applications of the dot product. This one, when I think of this, I think about an MRI. This helps us understand how an MRI works later on at the very end of physics 163. Uh, radio. So it's like, it seems pointless and stupid right now, but trust me, there's so many applications of these silly little formulas, it's worth putting in the time now. And then you can spend more time doing stuff you care about when you transfer and say, oh man, I'm so glad I'm not doing that boring stuff anymore. All right, um, there's some examples worked out for you as well. A couple more examples on page 61. And um, 
This one, I know, uh, let's see, let's take a look here. This is a variation of what we just did, okay? So this is a special variation of what we just did. If you wanna get the angle between a vector and an axis, this is extremely useful. This can help you figure out all kinds of stuff in civil engineering or other branches of engineering. So if you wanna get the angle to an axis, what you do, just look carefully here. Here, the second vector was B. If I wanna get the angle to the X axis, I just put in I hat for B. If I wanted to do the angle to the negative X axis, I'd stick in a negative I hat. If I wanna get the Y axis, I just do this. And look at this, this ends up being the result. It's super easy. So if I wanna get the angle to the X axis, and again, here I'm doing the positive X axis, I just take the value of AX and divide it by A. How do I know that? Think, the I hat part is gonna clip off only the I hat parts of the dot product. Why? Because I dot J equals zero, right? And so any, any A sub Y will drop out. And what about I hat dot K hat? Because I hat dot K hat equals zero, the AZ is gonna drop out. Now, why do I get a one here? Because I A sub X in the I hat dot I hat, well, I hat dot I hat is one with no units. And so this actually works out really quickly. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. I'm gonna let you do it in practice at home because I think that's basically plug into a formula and it should be easy. Um, that doesn't mean you can do it without practicing it. It, it should be easier for you to learn at home. All right, so um, there's that one. So let me pause for a second. All right. Whew. Um, all right, so some questions there. Any, any questions before we go on to cross products? Okay, and remember, you can always chat with uh, Jay if you don't want to ask me. And uh, you know, if you come up with something while I'm lecturing, throw it in the chat at any time. And uh, uh, what do you think of these markers? Are they working? Is it good enough? Good markers. Okay, are these better than the other markers I was using? Or are they the same? Uh, they look a little more defined. Maybe. Okay. All right, because they're a little bit bigger, so I was worried they wouldn't, but maybe I should just get more of these then. All right, that's good to know. All right. Um, ah, these headphones hurt. Okay, so let me show you what you should be doing at home for the homework for this part. Okay, so we just kind of talked about this page, so let me make this a little bit smaller. So again, this is all page 60. I want you to know this stuff cold. All of this you have to be expert at and the quiz is going to ask you about every little detail of here. And so I wrote two different versions of the quiz. So there's an AM version and a PM version and they, they totally have different questions and they all have multiple versions. So you got to know this stuff cold. All right. All right. You really have to know everything about dot products. Here's another example that I worked out. So if you don't like the one that I did, or if it was too fast, you can walk through and see if you could do that example. And notice this one has different units. So you can see how the units matter. Um, one thing that is really important at all this, I expect you to know, when do you include a J hat? When do you not? When do you include a vector? When do you not? When is it, you know, what is the difference between hat vectors and regular vectors? Okay, and finally, I expect you to know when should the things have units? Think, vectors have units, magnitudes have units, unit vectors don't. It's a misnomer in that sense. So remember, unit vectors is the one case where you don't get units. Now think about this, vectors have I hats and J hats, magnitudes don't, unit vectors do. So we see that the unit vectors and the regular vectors are both vectors. Vectors have the I hats and J hats, okay? 
But then these two, the magnitude and the um, vector itself have units, but the unit vector doesn't. So you got to know that you're only going to get it by practicing. When you're checking the solutions, don't just look at them and see if you got the numbers right. See if you got all the little letters and hats and symbols and all that crap too. Because that stuff, if you get that locked down now, your life is going to be easier later. All right. Um, all right. Okay, let's go back. We got 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Okay, so I could tell we're gonna to have to do a little bit of lecture on Wednesday, but most of next Wednesday we'll be doing problems. That said, let's see if we could start with these cross products. Cross products are much harder, okay? Much harder. Um, so notice uh, the, yeah. Let me show you a little, little subtle difference here. It looks the same right here, but notice I didn't tell you what it equals because it's really, really long to write that out. In the, in, the, in the dot product, so now look, this is dot products. I could tell you the answer really quick. In cross products, oh, sorry, 3.9 is your homework for dot products, okay? And make sure you do all of those up to part K. If you don't have part K, use the online version. Cross products. Cross products, I didn't give you the answer because it's really hard. In polar form, we can get the magnitude of a cross product, but notice that's not the cross product. That's the magnitude of it, okay? We could use this to get the direction. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun over the internet. All right, so uh, normally I make a student walk up to the board and I literally grab them and start twisting their arm around and forcing them to move their hand the correct way. And then everybody feels sorry for them and they maybe they pay attention a little bit. But um, here, it's kind of hard to do that. So you're gonna have to actually do these motions with your hands and I'll stare at you in Zoom and be like, I guess they're doing it right, I have no idea. All right, so, um, okay, here's the rules. There's a bunch of different rules. Uh, oh my gosh. Let's just do part of this because there's no way I can do a good job in 10 minutes. So let's just start with the simple, uh, let's try and learn these two sets of rules and then we're gonna pick up and do this all again next time. But let's try and learn what a cross product is, okay? So um, we'll just get you an introduction. There's no way I can do a good job in 10 minutes on all of that. All right. We can learn one or two things about it though. Man, this board, I need to, huh. That's something I just noticed about these markers. They don't erase well. Hmm, all right, good to know. Probably because they actually work, right? All right, something to think about, <sighs> whatever. Okay, so we got some vectors here. Let's just throw out some random crap. Uh, let's say here's a vector. Let's call this one taco because I'm getting hungry. So this is the taco vector. And let's say this is uh, 10 degrees here. And let's say this is six uh, newtons. So this newton is a unit of force. So let's say I apply six newtons of force. And then let's say, um, oh, let's do it a little differently. Let's do a 45, I never do a 45. I hate doing 45 degree angles because students can get lazy and not know what they're doing. But in this case, let's say we have a 45 degree angle. And let's say this is six meters. And let's say this is cat, all right? Cat vector is six meters, all right? So clearly we're not gonna cross cat with taco. We gotta cross taco with cat, so it's a palindrome, all right? So what I wanna do now is I wanna learn about the taco cat, taco, you gotta have a little fun, right? So we're gonna do taco cross cat because notice that's a palindrome. 
Now, one of the things that we're going to learn next time about cross products, or I guess right now, is that if you switch the order, it matters. So multiplication, the order of operation matters when we're doing cross products. Yikes. One more way to screw up and lose points on a quiz, right? So you got to pay attention when you're doing vectors. Always check the order. And I would just get in the habit of being super particular about the dot product as well. That way you're always checking the order and just that way you're more likely to get your cross product questions right. So in this case, we have a, I wanna find the magnitude of this cross product. So again, that double means magnitude of, and so that would be taco times cat times the angle between. And so in this case, let's see, I got 45 plus, what is that, 80? So this should be 125. And notice we use sine of 125. So the dot product used cosine. The cross product will use sine. I'm gonna punch in these numbers and just see what I get. So in this case, six. Oh, geez, they're both six. Oh, that's funny. So six, well, that's 36. I don't need to calculate. Oh, I need to, okay. So 36 sine 125. I got about 29.5. All right. What do you think? What I do wrong? Yep or Satan oscillate my metallic sonatas or doc note. I descent to fast, never prevents a fatness. I died on cod. I was a big palindrome guy back in high school. Yep. All right. Um, all right. So in this case, what did I do wrong up there? Units. Yep. What are the units of this? Meters. No. Nope. Oh, wait. MN. Yeah. Newton meters. And so that is a unit of torque. And so this is a common, you usually use cross products when you're doing torque. So this would be Newton meters. And this is an advisable way to write it because if you write it the other way, somebody might think you mean millinewtons. So Newton times a meter is probably a smarter way to write this. All right. So, um, okay. Um, now, one of the things I want to talk about here is this. Remember the dot product used cosine. It talked about how parallel two vectors are. Take a guess. The cross product in some sense is a measure of how perpendicular, perpendicular they are. And notice these two are, this is an angle of, what did we say? 125 degrees. So this isn't necessarily the best example, but yeah. Think about this. If you plugged in zero degrees right here, what is sine of zero? Somebody else? You can punch it in if you want. Zero. zero, right, thank you. So if two vectors are pointing the same way, the cross product gives zero. What's the sine of 180? Also zero. So if you have two vectors that are, um, oh, let's see if we could sum this up. If you have two vectors that are parallel, the dot product, which measures how perpendicular they are, is zero. If you have two vectors that are perpendicular, you get maximum dot product. If you apply a force at a right angle, you get maximum torque. Ooh, okay. And then if two vectors are anti-parallel, pointing opposite ways, once again, we get zero torque or we get zero cross product. So we see that dot products are big when they're parallel. Cross products are small when the vectors are parallel. Dot products are zero when they're perpendicular. Cross products are big when they're perpendicular. And then anti-parallel, you get a negative dot product and you get zero for the cross product. So that can, that, I know that seems silly, but the reason we do that is if you have that intuition, it helps you check if your calculator was in degrees or radians. That's really what that's good for, right? 
So you punch it in and you're not paying attention. You're like, wait a minute, shouldn't this be negative? Cause I kind of know, oh, whoops, I was in radians mode. How are you gonna catch that unless you have some intuition about these things? So by grinding these out and then you make the computer do it all for you, you could use your intuition later on to check degrees of radians and see that kind of stuff. We still have three minutes. So let's see what else we can squeeze out of this turnip here. Um, all right, oh, the, the direction. Let's get the direction here. So let's do that. Okay, here's my vectors. Now I know this is gonna be really hard to do because we're all you know, on Zoom or whatever, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna try and follow these instructions. I'm gonna align the fingers of my right hand with the first vector, which was taco. Now look, there's four ways to do it. I could go like this, like this, like this, or like that and almost break my arm. So there's four ways to do it, okay? Just pick them all and we're gonna see which one works. So it's gotta be one of those four ways. After I do that, I need to be able to curl the fingers of my right hand towards the second vector, step two. So let's look. If I go like this, my fingers are aligned, but they don't curl the right way. If I go like this, they don't curl the right way. If I go like this, they do curl the right way. Okay, so let's read the instructions one more time. The thumb points in the direction of the vector. Check this out. Taco goes to cat, goes to into the page. My thumb is pointing into the page, right? Taco goes to cat, goes to into the page. Hopefully you can see that a little bit if I, there we go. Taco goes to cat. Oh my gosh, this is so weird. I can't do it on Zoom. All right, so um, does that make sense? All right, okay. And this begs the question of 3D coordinate systems. So I'm gonna show you that. I know it's time to go, but just give me a second. We're not gonna spend any time on it. We clearly need to revisit this and learn more. Okay, and so I just want to show you something really quick. One of the things that we need to understand is what does into the page and out of the page mean? And we're going to talk about that next time. And so we need to understand 3D coordinate systems if we're going to have engineering or physics in our, right? You just have to be able to do it. And you can see there's different ways of drawing these. Some of these are not drawn correctly. And we're going to learn which ones are not next time. And so... If you want to work ahead, you can go ahead and do the rest of chapter three at this point. And bear in mind that next Wednesday, I'm going to pick up all the details about cross products that we didn't do and coordinate systems. And then so next week, next Wednesday, we have class. The following Monday is your chapter three quiz, September 14th. I'm going to stop the live stream, open it up for questions. Somewhere there's a button to stop this.